Welcome back, everybody, to the 1987 Supermod. I am your host, as always, Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are traveling back to Canada, Winnipeg, Manitoba to be exact, and we are going to feature a new venue here. I did a little bit of research today and found something that was uh, better going to suit our needs, and it's called the Winnipeg Convention Center. Of course, as you can see, I've misspelled it here and have it as the Convention Center. That's what I get for trying to do this real quick before I record it. I'll have to go in and edit that. It's pretty funny, actually. So uh, I will have to make that adjustment, but we're going to, regardless, we're going to select it as our venue for this event this evening. And let's go into our backstage. We don't have any backstage incidents. Let's check our absent workers. It doesn't look like we're missing anybody that we're going to need. We're ready to book, but we are not ready yet because we have to give a rundown of the card. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, the AWA is featuring a stacked card. Medusa Michelli is going to face Vivian Vachon in our opener. Cactus Jack and Buddy Wolf will battle the Assassin and Steve Olsonowski. Mike Graham is going to tangle with Alan West. Sonny Rogers is challenging Nelson Royal for the world light heavyweight title. The terrorist Jack Victory is going to mix it up with Greg Gagne, Dick Slater, and Wahoo McDaniel are going to get nasty again. The Guerrero brothers are going to meet Rosen Summers in the semi-main event. And in our main event, a big main event, Scott Hall is going to square off against Larry Zabisco. These two have been embroiled in a nasty feud involving Kurt, Hang uh, I'm sorry, Kurt Hennig and Nick Bockwinkle, and the flames of this fire just keep getting stoked. Let's get to it, everybody. Let's get booking. Now, before we book this one, let's take a look at Medusa, and let's see how her win-loss has been lately. Okay, Vashant's taking the last two. So Michelli is going over here in Winnipeg. It's a 10-minute bout. Medusa is 23 here. She is young, and boy, was she talented. Very, very talented. So Medusa's getting the win, just as we talked about. Our next bout was our tag match, Cactus Jack and Buddy Wolf versus The Assassin and Olsonowski. We have not named any, made any of these teams, either of these teams, an official tag team, and, and I, don't, uh, I don't plan on doing so. Um, nobody's doing anything special here. It's no... It's not necessary to keep them together any longer than it is for this run of shows. As you know, we do a block system, and the block systems run nine weeks. So you get nine weeks of booking out of the layout of cards. So since Medusa, you know what? We're going to leave this one open-ended also. I was going to put over Assassin and Olsonowski, since Michelli took the opener, but we're going to go ahead and leave this one open and let the AI do what the AI does. Mike Graham and Alan West. I don't know if Graham's had any exposure in Canada, and I'm not exactly sure how much exposure Alan West has gotten either. Uh, obviously, we know Alan West has been in uh, Winnipeg before wrestling for us, but I'm not sure if Mike Graham has. So we're going to leave this one open-ended. Whoever wins, wins. It's just fine with me. And we'll see how it goes. I don't expect a big score for that one. Not because of lack of talent, but just lack of popularity. All right, Sonny Rogers is going to battle Nelson Roy Royal again here. This match goes 14. We're going to mix it up a little bit here. We're going to give Sonny Rogers a DQ win. Just so Sonny gets some kind of a win 
in this feud that they have going. Obviously, with the DQ, he's not going to take the title. Unless, of course, it happens again like it happened in the women's match. Anything's possible. But by rights, it certainly shouldn't. Here's the terrorist versus Ganya. We are putting Ganya over here, no matter what. Uh, uh, Greg Ganya was over in Winnipeg in real life. Greg Ganya was popular in Minnesota, and he was popular in Chicago. He was popular in the different cities in Wisconsin, and he was over in Winnipeg. Winnipeg was an AWA town. If you listen to Chris Jericho's podcast at all, look up the episode where he talked about the AWA and the impact it had on him. Obviously, Jericho grew up in Winnipeg, and the AWA was very active in Winnipeg and was the promotion in Winnipeg. So therefore, since Vern Gagne was so popular in Winnipeg, Greg Gagne, in turn, was also popular. Slater versus McDaniel. These two just slugged it out in a nasty bout where we had them in a strap match. You know that that was a blood fest. You know it with these two. And even though Wahoo is advanced in age here, he's almost 50, he could still go for the most part. And Slater, of course, uh, was phenomenal in the ring. So these two are putting on great matches. You can, you can rest assured of that. In this match, we are going to put Dick Slater over by a tainted win, so he's going to cheat to win. And these two are tied into the feud with Von Rotsky and also Bobby Duncan. So this just keeps, keeps things going. It's what I like to call, they're just putting some more salt and pepper into the soup to keep it interesting, to keep it with flavor. All right, the Guerrero brothers are going to battle Rose and Summers. We're going to leave this one open-ended. I don't think the Guerreros have much pop popularity in Winnipeg. Rose and Summers should, but we'll leave it open-ended. Here we can go ahead and uh, pull our tag teams. I'm starting to remember that now. <laughs> of course, the Guerrero brothers aren't in there because I have them as a Stable, but that's okay. So we've got Chavo. And then we got Hector. And again, we're going to leave this open-ended. And it's booked. And our big main event is Scott Hall versus Zabisco. We're going to have them go 30. We're also going to get some heat for this one. And we're going to have Zabisco go over by interference. And it's going to be an epic. Zabisco is going to go with outside, go over with outside interference from Nick Bockwinkle. Ooh, would that crowd be hot. That crowd would be pissed seeing something like this. Really pissed. That's exactly what we need for a good card like this. So again, we're at an hour and 22 minutes here. That's a solid card for Winnipeg. A solid card here for the AWA. Um, this tour has been hot so far. So let's see how we do in Winnipeg. Obviously, we're going to have a shift in popularity. People are going to get different scores. So let's get rolling. All right, we put uh, Medusa over Vivian Vachon. A 46 overall is not bad at all for these ladies. And Olsenowski gets the win over Buddy Wolf. So what we planned to do ended up happening anyway. The baby faces went over. And the Assassin is the only one that's got a somewhat decent number there in Winnipeg, but overall a 50 score for the second match, not bad. Mike Graham takes out Allen West, as expected, and Mike Graham actually scored a 48, so that's not terrible. We're going to keep an eye on this one, 
And we're going to have to get Allen West some wins here. Next, we got Rodgers going over disqualification on Nelson Royal. Nelson Royal actually scored a 60. That's a real good score for Nelson Royal in Winnipeg. I didn't know that he had had any Canadian exposure. But uh, Sonny Rogers gets the win, so at least this somewhat is interesting, or at least there's a form of wins trading back and forth. Greg Gagne gets a win with the Gagne sleeper, and of course, I'm proving a liar here that Greg Gagne only scores a 50, so that shows he's really not that over on paper in Winnipeg. And we're going to fix that because Greg Gagne was over in Winnipeg and deserves a better score than that. All right, Dick Slater cheats and beats Wahoo. Both men score a 60, and now we get the opposite of the usual problem we've had, where the score goes over what these two men have uh, scored before. So again, I, I just I don't understand the scoring system. I don't get it. And this one's actually got a penalty for Wahoo McDaniel who's got declining physical ability, but all their bonuses are in here. They scored, Both of them score a 60, and they end up going 62. Whereas we've had people score you know, 88 and an 82, and they get a 79 rating. I can't explain it. I really can't. So let's go to our uh, semi-main, and let's see how our tag team match did. Tag team match gets a real nice score here. Buddy Rose gets the win. Good. We needed that. The only thing that's lousy here is that the last three matches were all heel wins over baby faces. That's the only thing that's lousy here. So, but a nice score. Let's see if there's any penalties. Summers gets inconsistency, and I don't know how you how you fix that, if you even can fix that. That's a. Yeah, I just I don't quite understand that one, but we got a good overall rating here and a nice setup for our main event so let's launch into this main event here in the winnipeg convention center because we forgot that n <laughs> and let's see how holland zabisco do now 84 overall in winnipeg terrific terrific score bachwinkle that sneaky bastard gets in there mixes things up cheats helps his man get the win you know the crowd is throwing beer, beer cups, soda cups, chewing tobacco cups, and cigarette butts into the ring at these two, at, at Zabisco and, and Bachwinkle, pissed off. And I don't blame them. That is uh, BS. Zabisco cheated to win, that dastardly evil human being. And this feud stays red hot. Red hot. Great feud. Let's finish it up. And if you look in the top left corner here, folks, this is going to finish us up for the month of uh, September also. So we have some stuff to take a look at when we close out here. So we're finishing up the show. We are going to give some speeches here. Medusa gets a hug because she worked hard and she's apparently a little down and out here. So we're going to give her a hug. Let's give Scott Hall some praise. He did very well here. And we're even going to give Zabisco some credit here because uh, he also did a real good job. So Medusa's happy, Scott Hall's happy, and Larry Zabisco's happy, and we're happy. And if we go back to our Excel spreadsheet, we got to prepare the next block here, folks. So we got some work to do off screen, of course, and we'll roll out our next set of towns. Well, it's not our next set of towns. We will route our next rotation of towns. Here we go, back to the main screen. Looks like Bruno is not going to get re-signed by the WWF. If Bruno does not get re-signed, let's see if we can't afford him and bring him in. He would be a good fit for the AWA. Here's something pretty cool right here. Danny Hodge signed with All, J All Japan. Not quite sure what he would do with them, but he did sign with them. If you remember, we brought Danny Hodge into the game. We imported him not too long ago. And this is where we start talking about contracts here. 
Pedro Morales is going to stay with the WF. He's got to be mid to late 40s here. 44, okay? How many times did he have the title? He had the World Heavyweight title once in the WWF, and he held the tag team title with Bob Backlund for a little bit there in 1980. Also, I introduced for 7.0, I introduced a bunch of new titles, and Pedro Morales did have quite a few other titles too. So, cool. Looks like Bob Orton Jr. is going to re-sign with the WWF. He can do that all he wants, but as we know, he, uh, he ends up quitting the WWF. And we'll have that happen in this game. Johnny V is going to re-sign too, but he also quit the WWF. Steiner, Garvin, Rick Renslow. All looking to stay with their respective promotions. Of course, the CWF, although they're making money, we're going to make it real life here. And uh, they are going to close down here in December. Pez Watley what I consider to be one of the most underrated guys of all time. Man, was he hilarious on that microphone. He's also going to stay with uh, Florida. Iceman King Parsons, who we may bring in through our alliance if he ever signs back with uh, World Class. He's going to stick with Wild West Wrestling, which, of course, Wild West Wrestling was closed down already by this point in real life. We just haven't done it in this game. Kareem Muhammad, which is Ray Candy. Multiple time champion anywhere he went. Very nimble guy for a big guy. He's gonna be out of his out out of uh, out of a job there in Florida. So that's always fun stuff to take a look at. Ed Morrow's retiring. He was a good hand from up there in Canada. Tahitian Prince, I think, was Samu, and it is yeah. Let's take a look and see. Oh, Bill Mercer's gonna resign with. Wild West, that's right. This was the time period where Bill Mercer had left world class and gone to the startup Wild West. Of course, as we know, as we said earlier, Wild West was technically closed down by this point, and he would not have re-signed with them, obviously. So let's take a look at how we did financially this month. We made the most money we've ever made. We made 875000 Nice. Our merchandise sold the best it's ever sold. Our gate sales were the best they've ever been. Everything is on the up here. Sponsors are up. Everything's up. We are doing fantastic, and we have really turned this ship around. AWA is, is back with some blood in their veins, folks. We're doing pretty good. Let's take a look and see how much longer we have left on our merchandise upgrade because that's going to bring us in an absolute fortune. We're at 80%, and we're scoring, should be 4% 4, 4 a week. It is. So we got five weeks left until the next upgrade. So Jimmy Snuka made us a ton of money. Merchandise, Kurt Hennig, Nick Bockwinkle right up there, Vern Gagne. Bob Backwinkle's climbing. I'm telling you, I'm really considering him taking the title. So our merchandise is doing great. We're, we're doing well. This is all working out well, and it's all real. And it looks like the next show we're going to film here, folks, is going to be a TV taping, which is always fun. It's always exciting to do the TV tapings. Let's take a look at our titles. Let's see where everybody's at. So Nick Bockwinkle has had the World Heavyweight title now for 16 months. So that's a great title reign. We got Nelson Royal here. He's now had the title for five months. Another nice reign. The Midnight Express here have had the, the title for two months. And then, of course, we got this mess going on with the women's title, which President Stanley Blackburn will address at the TV tapings, no doubt. All right, that's going to close us down for this episode, folks. Sit tight. There it is. Lawler's only got one appearance left. We've been talking about that, so we're going to have to work, work, do our magic to get him back, and uh, we'll do it the same way we did it last time. So, folks, thanks a lot for tuning into this episode. If you haven't already, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and why don't you hit that share button and start letting your other friends that maybe play TEW or are thinking about it, let them know 
about our channel and what we got going on here. And uh, I'll be more than happy to send you and them the Super Mod link if you would like. Go to braddrake.net slash contact. Drop me a line. I will be more than happy to send you a link over to the Google Drive page where you can download not only the database, but the picture pack. And then you can start playing version 6 yourself and have some fun with it. And here in just a couple weeks, the first week of March, we are going to release 7.0. It's not ready yet. I still have a lot more uh, work to do to it. I keep adding more titles. I keep getting more realistic schedules. The UWF is now running their realistic schedule in version 7. Memphis is now running their realistic schedule. Continental uh, Championship Wrestling is now running their realistic schedule. So we just keep making things more real and just keep making it happen. Last but not least, folks, if you want to join us in conversation about the Supermod, go to facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. That's facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. Thanks a lot, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time.